everyone, it's Reen. So today's video is going to be about how I did well in AP World History and like what advice I can give you and tips and strategies that worked for me throughout the year. Um, so obviously it doesn't apply to everyone. Everyone has their own way of doing things um, and it definitely doesn't guarantee you an A or a 5 on the AP exam. However, this is just what works for me and um, I know that AP World History was one of my first AP classes. I really didn't know what I was going into, so I'm kind of just putting this video out there to also uh, help others gain a perspective um, on the class before they take it. Uh, so first, um, I'd like to talk about uh, how I utilized my textbooks. So um, we had two textbooks. Uh, one was a primary source textbook, which was amazing. Primary sources, it's basically like a diary or a, um, a, an interview or a speech from that time period in history. Um, and so the cool thing about primary sources is that if I wasn't understanding, say, one event, or I wanted to know a little bit more about it, I wanted to spark my interest more, I would go back and read a primary source from that time period, and it kind of gave me like a different perspective on what happened and kind of um, helped me understand what happened better. And then the other one was a um, just a normal, huge textbook with a lot of information, very detailed chapters on every, every section of history that we went through. Um, so I definitely use the primary source textbook much more than the big old normal textbook. So I have like this kind of outlook on history where if I'm interested in it and I look at it as if it's a story and like it's so much more interesting, it doesn't feel like I'm memorizing information, it actually feels like I'm reading a novel or something about something that happened once. So it, that's just my perspective. Um, and then another thing is, uh, for the textbook, um, we were assigned chapters to read. However, um, I find I found it very boring and tedious. So I only read the sections where I was a little bit fuzzy on. Like I didn't really understand the lecture that well in class, so I'd go over and like look over it and read more of the details of what happened. So um, that just worked for me. Uh, also, I recommend that uh, you invest in buying a AP World History exam book, um, either the Princeton Review, Barron's, How to Get, Get a Five version, whatever whatever you want, um, or you could also borrow a book from the library. Uh, just having a review book is very, very beneficial in that it's concise, all the information is there that you need to study. Um, it even helps with studying for the individual um, era exams. So like in my class we had five era exams and for each one I would literally spend the like one around a week or a week and a half for the exam just looking over the review book. Um, and so I will actually show you guys uh, how I used to mark inside my exam review book and how I would. Okay so this is the um, first section of our re like review book that actually started reviewing. I know it said cap says chapter 6, but the chapters prior to this were all dedicated towards going over the essay formats and basically the multiple choice and like a heads up on how to how to do well in the AP exam itself. And this is the actual material. This is where it starts. So it goes from 8000 BCE to 600 CE. And this was actually, this time period, this chunk of time, was what my first um, exam was all about. Um, and so, you kind of see, I started, I would read, and then I would um, take a sticky note and write down, like, the main points that I had gained from the section or whatever. Uh, so, as you go through, it keeps... There's more sticking notes, and it just keeps getting more and more. Um, and then also I highlighted, because I knew that I wasn't going to sell this book, because I have, like, younger siblings that I'm going to pass it down to. Just, like, highlighting key terms. You don't want to overdo it with highlighting, because then you lose the point of it. And then what I would do, after I had went through and, like, 
finish the entire section, which was a lot of pages. And then after I had went through once and like highlighted and like added my sticky notes with my main points, I would go back and look over the sticky notes specifically because they had all of the main points. And then I would also look at any visuals or graphics and just kind of try to process that. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about um, aside from the review book is my AP World binder, which was required for me, like at school, like my teacher would go around and check our binders, like periodically. Um, but even if it's not required of you, it would probably be a good idea to have an organized system of, you know, keeping everything um, in one place so that when it comes time for the studying for the actual AP exam in May, you have a place where all of your worksheets and lecture notes are organized and easy to access. So there's like a lot of packets that were very helpful for studying um, that if I had had an organized binder, I would have lost or misplaced or whatever. So definitely do that. Um, definitely have a good, good system. Um, and then also it's great for keeping your tests. My teacher used to pass back our tests, like our graded essays and um, not the multiple choice, just the essays, and then also like individual scores and everything. And it's very helpful to look back at your teacher's notes and like learn from your mistakes, obviously. So by the time of the AP exam, you have like a very good understanding on how to write a good essay. The AP exam board for AP World will like put out what the required requirements are and what the AP exam readers are looking for in each essay. And you have to come up with an organized, stylistic way of conveying those points in writing, um, and you need to keep up with that format and practice that format. So um, whether that be for CC, compare and contrast, or for CCOT, change in continuity over time, or for the DBQ, which is the document-based questioned essay. And so with the essays, our teacher kind of helped us out by coming up with his own rubric and that we would follow and that rubric was very helpful. So if your teacher has a rubric like that, um, you can ask them for that, or you can always go online, look things up, like look up um, rubrics for each essay type, or you can use your AP exam review book and see what they suggest for like stylistically. Um, and you just have to make sure to hit on the main points. But if you start off by using a rubric from the beginning of the year, from the first test, and you just carry through with that rubric, by the time of the AP exam, you will be able to write each essay correctly and concisely in a way that um, it will be easier for the AP exam readers to just pick out the main points and what's important. So if you felt this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts below in the comments section. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.